Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. So in this uh, video, I'm going to ask that question, is HDR still relevant in 2024? And uh, honest truth is, I still think it is, because when you have these really high contrast type images where you've got artificial light and you've got darkness, um, being able to extend the dynamic range of your, your image by you know, six, seven, eight, nine stops really does give you the ability to create magic. And even with these modern cameras that we have are extremely powerful with their 14 or 15 stops of dynamic range, um, we can still add, you know, we can take that to 20, 21, 22 stops of dynamic range by using HDR. And what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to do that. The raw images, there are three, um, are in a, a, in a link down below. You're welcome to download them and uh, follow along, see if you can create the same. Um, just, just respect my copyright on those images. If you do wish to share the image when you've done it, all I ask is that you give credit to myself for the original images. Um, so what we're also gonna cover here is we're gonna do a sky replacement, but a sky replacement in a different way because um, one of the problems you have when you have a, a lot of contrast, very dark skies, is that the sky replacement module in um, Photoshop can really struggle to define the edge uh, between the sky and, and the buildings. And so what I'm going to show you here is how to manually do it and how to manually mask the screen to be able to put a sky in behind so you can choose uh, where you want it, where you don't want it. So I'm going to show you that as well. Also, if you haven't already seen my new website, take a look, jrmathlin.uk. Um, have, a, have, a, have a look there. There's some good information about me and the gear I use and uh, and the sky pack that I mentioned in, in this video, the night sky pack is there and I have added a preview now so you can see uh, what images you're getting if you do choose to purchase the sky, this sky pack, night sky pack. Um, also, my workshops um, are now available. You can have a good look at them. There are two now that are planned. We have the 18th of May, which will be in London, and we have the 8th of June, which will be in Paris. Both are seven nights, eight days. Um, they're fully inclusive. They include for uh, um, your hotel, your evening meal, your breakfast, and all the transport and travel when you're there with us on the workshop. So I try to limit the number of people that come because I, I prefer to have more of a one-to-one -one type environment and uh, if you do click on more information any of these you can go through and read a little bit about uh, what, what what the uh, workshop's all about what we're going to do and the sort of images we're going to try and capture and uh, we really will get into the day to night techniques so uh, hopefully um, yeah you can join us I'll have a look at those uh, later in the year I will be looking to put together the English medieval cities which will include a dawn at Stonehenge um, I'm still working on uh, booking the hotels and getting things sorted for that. But if you are interested in, in that, by all means, go to my contact page and drop me uh, drop me a mail there and I will include you in the mail shop once that's up and running. Anyway, back to this video. OK, let's get started. So is HDR still relevant in 2024? That's the question. Well, you can see this shot here I took in Stratford-upon-Avon and... Uh, I'm just going to take a photograph here of the, the Vintner eating house and the, the town hall. Now, if I just let the camera expose the image here, you can see that it's it's tried to capture the right sort of level in the centre here. But of course, the lights are really, really bright. And they these modern LED lights are so bright that they've actually blown the image out. And also, if you look at the sky, it's it's under it's underexposed the sky. So if if I go through to, uh, to say, the blacks here and, and, and have a look at the blacks, can go to the histogram actually there and just look at the the clipping that's complete blackness there's, there's no data there at all so we really would struggle to to work this image even if we you know brought down the highlights and opened up the shadows you can see if i just zoom in there you can see that there are some stars in the sky it it's not it's not horrendous but you you are struggling with the image there's a little bit of noise but we are still blown out here. You can see that we are still completely. If I go to the whites here, hold down the option key and just have a look. You can see there that the the white areas are really, really, really bright. You'd have to bring the, right, the whites right the way down to the bottom. Um, and it would probably just about just about get by. But, you know, we really do need to increase the dynamic range here. So what I also shot was another image that was three stops under. 
And if I bring down the highlights on this one, you'll see that it's still blown out on the wall there. So it's, it really is still struggling there. So just put that back. So I took another shot, three stops under again. So fifth of a second now, all the way down from a, from five seconds uh, where we started. And you can see F8, F8's good, good sharp part of your lens. Try to reduce any chromatic aberration um, and ISO 100 to try and reduce the amount of noise. So now I have control. If I open up the shadows here, just boost the exposure slightly and I can bring down the shadows on this one. And you can see I now have control of those highlights. I can now choose where those highlights are. However, the rest of the image is just too dark. There's too much noise here. If I bring up, up the brightness to make it work, and we just zoom in here just to render that for a second, you can see the, the amount of noise that we have there in the sky is, is quite high. There's banding there, the classic Canon banding. You can see that there. So we, we would have to do a lot of work to remove that. So is HDR relevant in 2024? Well, I would say it still is. Even with these modern cameras with very high dynamic range, uh, you know, 13, 14, sometimes 15 stops of dynamic range, uh, we still need to shoot these, these images where we have tremendous contrast. Uh, and as you can see, there there is... Um, six stops of difference between the, the lowest and, and the highest. So we can we can use HDR to bring these together. So before I do that, what I want to do is I'm just going to reset these back to where they were. So I'm just going to click on each one and then click reset. There we go. Just take them back to where they were. Now, before before we, we, um, we do that, I want to try to reduce the noise in each of the images. Now, we can always do the straightforward thing that I, I show you. We can go down to, uh, to detail and we can click on the denoise function. And, uh, and that, that does a fantastic job. You know, that, that's up to four or five stops of noise, noise correction. Extremely good. But it does use an AI uh, set of instructions within your, within your processor, within your system. And if you don't have a more modern computer, then denoise can take a long time. And I have had a, con a number of conversations uh, in the comments with, with people about how long their computers take to to actually do this. So if your computer doesn't have the modern IA instructions, i.e. it takes you know minutes or even tens of minutes to run the DI the denoise function here, what, what we can do is go back to the old way uh, of doing noise correction, which is still pretty good. Uh, and just for the benefit of this video, I'm going to show you you how to do that. So let me just brighten this scene up so we can see the noise. Just want to bring the exposure up. I'm just going to open up the exposures all the way here. Ignore this. This is because the image is rendered based on the, the image you have. If you just zoom in, it will re-render based on the actual noise that you've got. So there you go. You can see the noise there. I'm just going to move it to the noisiest part of the sky, all the banding there. So what we can do is, without using the denoise function, we can go down to the detail section here. We can look at luminance. This is this this helps you correct uh, manual noise reduction. So if I slide that across until that noise is less of an issue, so we're coming across. I would say about about there. I'd also move the color slider over slightly, the color noise slider. Just bring that, and uh, and then you've got the detail slider. You can move the detail to the left or to the right just to find where. The noise, the noise levels just a little bit better, and I would say, I mean, it's extreme up here in the top right corner, but down here, that's not looking too bad. However, it's applied to everything, so you've got a bit of a sort of almost cartoon effect. It becomes a bit wishy-washy. So what we can do is we can go to the masking slider, which is just above the denoise. There, we can hold down the Alt or Option key. And we can move that masking slider over. Now, as you move it over, anything that's black will get the noise reduction and anything that's white will get the sharpening. So as we move it over so all the sky is black, there we go, about there, and we let go. Now the noise, the noise correction will only be done on these areas and the sharpening will be done on, on the areas that were white. Of course, the brickwork could could lose a little bit of texture because of the level of uh, luminance we've got. If I bring that luminance back, you can see a little bit more of the detail of the bricks comes back, but you do get a little bit more of that noise. You've got to find the balance point between where they are. And there's also at the bottom a smoothness slider, and this, this can be quite powerful sometimes. If I bring that to the left, it loses a little bit of the, the noise control in the sky, but it brings a little bit more detail back into some of the foreground. And if I, if I bring it over to the right, you can see it improves on the noise correction, but 
you do get a smoother finish on the brickwork. So you, you just sort of have to find a balance point with those. Um, and I think that, that that's a good way of, of correcting. Now, we did push the exposure very high there. So if we go back to a reasonable exposure now, you can see that the sky is actually quite viewable now. You can see the, the stars. However, for the purpose of this video, I am going to denoise. And if you do have a, a more modern machine, you, could, you can run denoise, then you can batch run them. So if I select all three, so I've clicked number one there, hold down the shift and click on number three. So all three are uh, illuminated. I can click on denoise. I'm going to go 50% in the middle here. I've selected three images. It says here, selected three images. Now it says it thinks it's going to take 12 minutes. Well, I can assure you it won't take that long here. So I'm just going to, um, this create stack that allows the new image to be put in front of the old image. If you say, yes, I want to create stacks, then the old image that you've got here, the, the current raw image will go behind the noise corrected DNG. Um, if you don't click it, then you, you keep all of them in your film strips. At the moment, we've, we've got three in our film strip. Um, and that, that effectively will, will stay as three. If I click that, it will go to six if I don't. So we'll click enhance uh, the images and you can see up in the top left corner, it's working on that now and it's computing the DNG files for, for the three. So there's the three images, the three raw images that we got at the moment and they will be put behind the noise reducted images. You can see this one now is already done, enhanced the uh, enhanced noise reduction DNG. So the raw is now behind that. If, and you can always right click on here, go to stacking and you can click unstack when it's finished if you wanted to put them back. So it's just going to finish there now. So that took about 30, 30 to 40 seconds to do all three. So just finishing up, there we go. So all three are done. So as, as I say, if I right click, go to stacking, I can unstack um, and that will that will bring the image back. So we will have the three raw images shown on here as well. So now, now we've got the um, the three images that have been noise corrected. I can go back to that, that top one there. We'll come up to the same level with the um, with the exposure and you can see there, if I just open up the shadows as well, you can see that the, the noise in the skies is, is much better presented uh, and, the, and the detail is kept within the brickwork. So the, the new AI functions for denoise, extremely good. And if you look back through my video list, you'll find um, a video specifically dealing with this denoise and looking at how capable it is and, and how many stops we can actually correct. And most importantly, it also deals with, with do you do your denoise at the beginning or do you do your denoise at the end? Uh, you know, if you're putting lots of corrections in and radial filters and linear filters, etc., where's the best when's the best time to do the denoise? And what you'll discover from that video is it doesn't really matter because it's just data you're dealing with. So the data remains the same whether you you do it at the beginning or the end. I do it at the beginning because it gives me a cleaner image to work with as we go forward. And also, if you do use a generative fill in Photoshop, you have a higher resolution image to work with um, because that, of course, will render it in Photoshop and send it back as a TIFF. So I always recommend to do your, your denoise or your noise correction at the early earliest time you can at the beginning uh, of the work. So I'm just going to zoom back out. So this is the image that we've got here. These all three are, are, are corrected now, as I say. I'm just going to put the exposure back to zero there and I'm going to put everything back to zero. So, so it's effectively as the image was shot, but now, of course, it's been uh, had the noise reduction applied. I'm going to highlight all three. So I click on number one, hold down the shift, click on number three. Now you can right click here and you can go straight to photo merge HDR. And uh, if you click that, it will create three separate HDRs based on the image that you've got and the stacked image behind it. OK, so we don't want to do that. We what we want to do is take the three images that we've got. So to do that, we need to unstack these three. So we, we've highlighted all three. We'll right click here and we'll go to stacking and we'll go to unstack. OK, so you can see that the the original raw image is now put back next to the noise uh, reduced images, as you can see there. So now we can select just three images that we want, which are the noise corrected images. So if, if you haven't got them highlighted, you can click on one, hold down the command or control key on Windows there, command on, on Apple, and just click on each one separately so that you can identify those three. Right click on any one of them, go back to photo merge and HDR, 
And now what it will do is it will just take those images and it will put them into the HDR module here. Now, auto align, you should always have that clicked um, just to make sure everything is fully aligned in the image. And auto settings, well, that doesn't really matter because we can adjust later uh, where they are, but I'm going to put auto, auto settings on. And then you have the de-ghost amount. So if anything's moving in this image, the wind is blowing the flag or or there's something here that's 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 moving from one frame to the other, you can increase your level of de-ghosting to ignore the, the movement. In this case, nothing's moving. So I, I could just select none. And then I can also click create stack again. So I can put these three HDR, the images used for this HDR behind the main HDR image so I'm just going to click merge and you'll see up in the top left corner it will process these three images into a single HDR and then it will create one HDR at the bottom there we go here it is here so they're the three they're the three uh, original raw images this is the stacked noise redu reduced images here so I'm just going to click on that so here we go so we're in here so the auto settings was ticked so it's it's predetermined what it thinks is the right level for this shot um, and, and, you know, it's not bad. It's, it's a little bit, little bit bright here and here. So maybe we can bring down the, the highlights just a little bit more. If you go too far, then they start to look a little bit unnatural. So I'm just going to bring them up just a little bit. We can open up the shadows all the way. I don't mind that at all. And I'm just going to bring the vibrance back down. So I've just double clicked on the word vibrance, double clicked on saturation. So the colors are not, not too bright in there and I'm just going to boost the exposure just a little bit more and the reason for that is is that when we go over into um, into Photoshop shortly just to do a few corrections um, I'm going to want to do a sky replacement because although we have stars in the sky and we can't really draw much from that because it was just these single exposures so I'm going to do a sky replacement and I'm going to replace the sky and this is a very difficult sky replacement to do because the sky replacement module within Photoshop will not be able to determine uh, where the sky and the building start or stop and I'll show you how we get around that problem so let's just do a few little um tricks with this image before we go into Photoshop I want to make sure that we've got everything uh, the perspective and perpendicular to each other so I'm going to just go down to the transform and I'm going to click guided and I'm just going to take the corner of this building so I'm going to go where the cross is on the corner of that building there and I'm just going to run it down to the bottom there so that I want that to be a vertical line as you can see and I'm going to go over here to the edge of the town hall and I'm going to take a line from the edge of the town hall there down to the bottom. And now it's going to pull this one vertical and this one vertical. Now that is a bit of an optical illusion. It looks like that's falling away slightly over there. So you can grab the bottom here and you can move it more or left, left or right, just to find where you, you might think, well, that actually, the, you know, from a optical illusion perspective, it, it looks about right. So I think we're, we're pretty well there. I'm just going to go slightly more to the left there at the bottom and I think that looks nice there same here that just needs the top needs to come over slightly so I can move the top or the bottom to compensate for that I'm just going to pull this over to the right and that just brings out a little bit more vertical here so yeah I'm, I'm I think that's about right I'm not going to do a horizontal here because we've got a nice leading line running away in this shot but what I am going to do is going to go to the crop tool up here one of the five main tools in the toolbar and I don't want, although this is a beautiful end to the side of this building, this, this modern light does really quite spoil that. So I'm just going to pull that in to the edge, edge of the building there, like so. I'm going to bring the, 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 the sky down. So this, this roof line, as you can see, finishes in the corner. So again, we've got another sort of leading line coming out of there. And I'm going to pull the bottom up so, it, so that this leading line of curb goes into this corner okay so you end up with incredible depth falling away because you literally have filled the frame at this end and at this end we've only got a third of the frame filled and that that can work quite well what I'm also going to do is just give this whole road a slight tint to the right so I'm just going to go outside there where you get the two up and down arrows and I'm just going to rotate slightly to the right like that just just so we've getting the fall of the perspective about right so I'm quite happy with that. Just going to move that over just a little bit more. There we go. So I'm going to hit return and that will be our cropped image that we're going to use. 
quite happy with that. I think we just need to check the perspective again because we made a slight rotation and this column is just falling away slightly. So let's go, let's go back into transform with guided. We'll have to go back into the crop tool position here just to make sure we can see where they are. And if you click on guided and you don't see your little lines appear, you click on these little hash lines just, just here and then that will give you the little hash lines here. So now there's the one on the left. I just want to make that run with the drain pipe there, as you can see. So I just moved that over. That's now running with the drain pipe. And uh, I'll try putting it back onto the building wall there just to see if that works. Now, again, it's leaning it's leaning too far. So I'm just going to put that back where it was. Make sure we're, we're quite happy with the way that that looks. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. The streetlight still looks like it's falling away from us slightly, that, but that's because we're so close and we were, you know, 23 millimeters is relatively wide. So it does it does look like it's falling away slightly, but but that's okay. I'm 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 happy with that. Um, we can correct that if we want to, um, but um, for the sake of the length of this video, I'm gonna try to to stick with what we've got here. So I'm happy with all of those with all of those items. I think we're ready to go over into into um, Photoshop and just do a little bit of tidying up and also do a sky replacement. So to do that, we right click on this image, we go to edit in and we can go to edit in Adobe Photoshop. In this case, I, I'm using beta. People, a number of people have asked me, why do you use beta, not the standard 2024? Because it's got everything in it that you would see in the beta. And, and, and that is true. However, with the beta version, I find that it's just one step ahead and, and I don't seem to find any problems with it, but I do find that things like generative fill and the remove tool uh, are just a little bit better uh, in the beta version at the moment. Things could change as the updates come along. So I'm going to click on, on the beta for Photoshop and then it's, it will open up in, in um, Photoshop. There we go. So now we've got the image here. There's a couple of cups down here. I'll look, we'll need to get rid of those. And uh, there's a yellow box there, which I don't particularly like. And uh, there's some alarm boxes on the wall, but we do have these modern LED lights. So I'm not going to make too many changes to this image because after all, it is a modern scene. It was, it was taken towards the end of last year. So what we're going to do is, first and foremost, is we're going to go find the, uh, the remove tool, which comes under the spot healing brush tool, J. You can click J. Click Remove Tool. We're going to zoom in on some of these areas and then uh, just zoom in here. I'm just going to hold down the space bar so I can move it. And it got a little Remove Tool and I'm just going to go in there, one cup, and then followed by uh, the next cup. It's just going to compute what needs to be done for that one. I'm going to remove that one there as well. There we go. These big red labels on the windscreen, a little bit uh, on the window, sorry, a little bit of a distraction so I'm just going to take those out as well there we go that's nice and tidy and then let's see if we can do the yellow box with the remove tool let's give it a go and one thing you find with the remove tool is if you do need to just overlap ever so slightly over the edge and as you go around once you've gone all the way around you don't have to fill it in if you've joined up all the way around whatever the shape and you let go it'll automatically fill in the center and there we go it's done a, a really good job at, uh, at taking that out so I'm not sure there's a great deal that needs to be done here. I'm just going to take out a couple of these little white dots that we can see uh, in places, just uh, and some cigarette butts. Wherever you go in the world, there's always cigarette butts on the ground. So we'll just go through, take the worst of them out. There's a the leaf there. As I say, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go crazy. Just looking around, making sure we're happy with what we've got. I'm going to take out the. Uh, the alarm box. So I'm making my brush bigger and smaller here with the remove tool by using the left, to the left of the return key, you'll find some square brackets and one makes them bigger and one makes them smaller. So just going to go around that one there like so, and that worked quite well. And there's one just tucked in underneath this light. So let's see if we can get rid of that one as well. Yeah, pretty good job with that. I'm going to leave the cables in um, because they're feeding these, uh, these lights here and we're going to light these up in a bit of day tonight in a while. Um, look at the mist on the, the, the condensation on the windows. It's beautiful, that is. So you'll see a number of these buildings, particularly the one that we're going to be working on 
was it was built in 1490 so they've been feeding they've been feeding people for uh for a long time so i didn't mean to do that so just control z to undo that in this this particular shop so yeah so i think i think we've got everything so all this i think is left to do. i just want to take out this parking sign uh never too big fan of uh of signs and poles but this one can stay there that that's that's part of what is and there's another parking pole here now this is a little bit more difficult for the remove tool because it's in front of the window and um i'm wondering if it's able to and it is excellent but you can see there's a shadow on the wall from that from that one there so let's just go down and take the shadow out very good right anything else over here not really it's a cctv camera this is so um i think we're good so i just need to do the road i just want to take these uh disabled parking lines off the road here so i'm just going to make my brush a little bit smaller and then i'm just going to run around catch as many as i can in one pass there we go and it will remove those same here i'm just going to go around on the road here and just go around it it'll take those out i'm going to take that drain out because it's quite close to the edge of the edge of the image there just uh and then what we'll do here is we will do the same again so we just run around the disabled badge there it fills it in it removes it so we just use the remove tool i've not used any generative fill this time on uh on 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 this image you can use generative fill if you want to but uh i find that the remove tool is a very powerful tool and is very capable of delivering what it is that you want to do so here's the other disabled badge so you can see i've just gone around the outside i let go it fills in the middle removes it for us and then we're just going to go down here so just going to take this out across there and i think pretty well we've got everything there a little tiny bit left at the bottom there get rid of that that's fine so just a couple of little tidies up i'm going to leave those drains in the road that gives us some 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 interest Good, so I'm just going to zoom back to fit screen. So we've got the total image there. We've had a little bit of tidy up. There is a, a pink line there. Do you see that pink line that's, uh, that's sitting down there? Let's see if we can remove that with the remove tool. It's, it's obviously a light light that's bled through uh, from the edge of the image there. So just again, use the remove tool and it's done a great job to get rid of it. There we go. Okay, so what's left to do is a sky replacement. Now, as I say, if you... if if you just go to edit and go to sky replacement, it's going to struggle to know the difference between the sky and the roofs because the contrast is actually very similar. So you'll see you'll get you'll get a bleed through. Um, and even if you shift the edge to try to find where the edge is, you end up with this sort of very dark area. And you can try to fade those edges away. You can try to, to sort of play with that, but it just won't work in the uh, in this um sky replacement module so how do we do it well there's a number of ways we can do it we can go into uh, the select tool and we can select uh, the color range and we can try to select on the actual color of the sky so if i click on that and then i use the little pipette that we've got and i click on the sky um, and then hold down the shift key and click on the sky over here you can see we can pick a number of places so that we've got the sky picked up but of course because of that low contrast, it's bleeding through into the roof areas. You can try to, to alter that by using the fuzziness slider. So you can move that left or right to try to find um, as best you can, not including the roof. And you can also use the range um, to find more or less of the roof. So you can see where I clicked here, here, here and here. So you can see, but there's still the roof is still bleeding through because there isn't enough difference in color and there isn't enough difference in contrast us for us to separate this so this would require a manual selection and and how i would do that is i'd go to the um the lasso tool i'd right click and i'd select the uh the, the polygonal lasso tool and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom in hold down the space bar and and then move to the edge here and i'm going to start the line here i'm going to just click here and then i'm going to draw a line along to the edge of the roof 
and I'm just going to trace the roof line round. So where where effectively the um, the sky would be, and then you've just got to just got to click very little clicks just to go around any curves that, that you find, and then what we'll do is we will just literally trace that round. Now this will take a little bit of time just to trace your way around, but you it's a good way to make sure that you do get the sky get the sky selected, and we will have to make some other little selections once we've got this this main selection complete so I'm just going to carry on round like this and I'm literally just going to follow round everything that we've got you might think oh Jamie this this will take so much time but hey I do this for fun I'm not a one-click wonder I I don't just sit here thinking I wish I had a button that could just do that sometimes actually I get a lot of enjoyment and it's like a type of therapy for me to just um, do my artwork play with these uh, with these images and just just sort of get some relaxation whilst we're whilst we're doing this after all for me this is a hobby and it's a hobby I I really enjoy and uh, and by the time you've actually got round to moaning and complaining that you wish you had more more of an opportunity here you you would um, you'll probably have it done. Now we will come back a little bit later and fill in. You can see these holes here will need to be filled in and I'll show you how we'll do that in a little while. But what we're going to do here is just going to run around there and we can, again, we can also correct this in a little while. We can make some additional selections to make it work. So I'm going to speed up the video for now so you can follow me all the way through as I do this selection. So I'm just literally click, 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 uh, nice straight lines. And, um, and as I say, we can get the details. Now, if there's something you don't want, like I don't want this steel cowling, you can actually just effectively crop that out uh, by just going past it like I've just done there. So, so let me speed the video up. And uh, what I'll do is be back shortly and we will, we will have a look at what we're gonna do with this, with this selection. Okay, so now we've completed the um, the selection. I'm just going to zoom back there to <clears throat> fit screen. So we've got that selection all the way around uh, as you're into it. It takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it's worth running through. And and and, and as I, as you saw when I was going through, I decided I didn't want all the steel work on top of the building, so I just cropped around it. So now we've got to that point there. What what we want to do is actually turn this into uh, a selection. So I'm going to go into select, and I'm going to go down to uh, to select and mask here it is here click select and mask so now you can see that the mask that we've got as part of this 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 um, selection but we want the sky to be missing and the foreground to be present so once you go into the se select and mask module here you'll see there's an invert key if you click invert it will sw switch it around so you've got the foreground and now you've got the background cut out now there was a little bit of a detail here on the lights and I'm just going to zoom in, I'm just going to use the space bar to move across. You saw that we, we had this area here uh, when we were, went round. Well, whilst you're in Select and Mask, you have a number of tools available to you. You have a Refine tool, which is what's selected at the moment, and you also have a Brush tool. And if I take the Brush tool and just, just zoom in nice and tight on here, what I can do is I can remove the mask from here. So with, with, the, with the brush selected, you can add... If you hold down the Alt or Option key, um, then you can subtract, okay? So what we want to do here is subtract. So I'm just going to take a slightly smaller brush using the, the square brackets to the left of the uh, of the return key, and I'm just going to freehand round. Now, where you've got a straight line, you can still holding down the Option or Alt key, so it's still a negative. I'm holding down the Shift key as well now, and then I can just draw in another line. I can come into there, draw a straight line up to there, holding down the shift key, I can draw a straight line through there. So I can actually take out the uh, more of the mask just, just by using this brush. If I make the brush a little bit bigger now, holding still holding down the option or key, I'm just going to go in there and just, just take out a little bit big and just take that out. Same on this side, so slightly smaller brush, just going to 
just going to select in there, go around this, this little brass piece there, and then freehand round this curve. There we go. And then straight, straight along that edge there, using the shift key and straight back up here. There we go. And then just, just fill it in. So we've effectively added the mask to that gap within, within the light fitting there. Now the refine tool, you can use the refine tool. I'll make it a bit smaller there. You can use the refine tool to refine edges even more if you want to. So I could, I could say, well, I want to refine this edge here so I can run around that edge and it, it will actually refine the edge back within the mask. See that black piece there? I can, I can take that out. So you've just got the frame in there. So just run along the edge just to, just to take that edge off. Same on the bottom edge. And, and what it allows you to do is, is really work your your um, your mask in really 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 tight. So it doesn't matter too much because what we're also going to do is I'm just going to zoom back out here a sec. What we're also going to do is um, we're going to use the global refinement tools that come within the um, select and mask module here. And uh, what we can do is use the smooth feather contrast and shift edge so the smooth just gives us a smooth edge so if i if i zoom right in you see you can see the pixels along that edge if i if i add in say a smoothing factor of 10 you can see that it blends the edge ever so slightly we can also add a bit of feather now feather is much more powerful than smooth so actually you probably only want about half half a pixel for the feather and you can see otherwise things disappear here that it's been smoothened out so much so I go back to the refine tool here and just hold down the alt or option key. I can actually just paint those back in as well. You can you can just do that. You see, just holding down the optional alt key, which means now it adds, and then I can just paint that line back in and it'll add it back in for me. So that's a smooth, that's a feather. We can add a little bit of contrast on the edge. I don't want too much. Uh, and then the shift edge gives you more or less away from the line that you drew. So if I go with a positive, you can see that, uh, sorry, it's negative there. It it reduces the amount of the crop. And if I go with a positive, it extends it slightly. So going with a positive of plus 17 there. Remember, you can always just type into one of these boxes. So if I wanted that to be 20, it's highlighted at the moment. I can just type in 20, enter, and uh, it, will, it will select that. So you can now see we've got a nice edge and it's not got any pixels in it. It's nice and smooth. It runs around those edges. So where we were drawing with a straight line around the curves, you can see now that that blends in much, much better. So I'm just going to zoom out again. So we've got ourselves a really good mask here. So to move it to a mask, what we do is we say OK here. We click OK. And there, that's the mask now that we have. And then we can add a layer mask to the, the image that we've got. And we do that by clicking on the layer mask, little flag down here in the bottom right corner. We just click on that and it, it creates that layer mask. So uh, white conceals, black reveals. So the black in the layer mask is letting the background through. But because we have no background at the moment, it just shows it as no background. So what we need to do is add a sky in there. OK, so to do that, we need to open uh, your folders and files and find where your skies are. Now here's my night sky pack. This is uh, available in my website under jrmafflin.uk. You can find sky packs for purchase. I'm trying to be reasonable with the price. This is some of my best work. Um, they're pictures, night sky pictures from the UK, from uh, California and uh, other parts of America as well as South Africa. Um, so there's some really, really good skies. And one thing you can do with a Mac is you can highlight a file, press the space bar and review it. So you can just go through and have a look um, by working your way through it, the skies that we got. Now, these are all very high resolution images. They're available in JPEG. Uh, and for a little bit more money, you can buy them as, as the raw images, as DNG. So you can actually process the images yourself. Um, so they range between 45 and 60 megapixels so we can work our way through and pick a sky that we think we might like to use uh, in this shot so I'm just looking through that one's quite nice that was also a nice one I think I used that in my last video I do like that one so that's number one so what I'm going to do is select number one and uh, just see what number 12 was another Milky Way shot so I'm going to select now, I'm going to say open and it will open it as a new workspace. You can see this tab up, up, up the top here. 
So this, this image is, is separate from the other workspace. So how we move them across is we select this one. So we go Command or Control A. That's to select the whole thing. These are all these um, functions are available uh, up here. You can you can find them in the menu. And then we want to copy this. So we're just going to do as you always do, uh, Control C or Command C on a Mac. And that's now copied. Move over to the other workspace, over the tab. And now what we can do is Command or Control V to paste, right? It'll ask us if the uh, the color spaces want to be the same, and we just say, yeah, we're happy with that. So now the top layer is the sky, and the bottom layer is the foreground. So if I move the top layer behind the bottom layer, then the area that was showing through now shows through. So there you go. You can see that that sky um, in, the, in there. So what we can also do is whilst we've selected on the sky uh, layer here, layer one, what we can do is we can go to the move tool up in the top left there and we can grab the sky and we can move it about in the background. Of course, if you go left or right, it, it, it will come out of shot, but we've got, this is quite a big image, high resolution. I think this is a 60 megapixel image. So I can move that up or down. And in fact, I could move that up to get just a little bit of sort of cloudiness in that bottom area there. That works quite well. I probably want to darken this image a little bit because it's very, very sharp edges because it's very bright compared to the to the buildings themselves. Too bright, in fact. So whilst I'm still on the layer here, I can go to image and adjustments and then I can go to brightness and contrast. And uh, you can also look at levels and curves and exposures. You can you can do a number of different things in here, shadows and highlights, etc. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just go to brightness and contrast and I'm, I'm just going to darken that down just a little bit, just to see how that works. So, so you can darken that sky down, makes it look, look work quite well. And I'm cancelling that because what you can also do in adjustments is you can also go into hue and saturation. And in hue and saturation, you can actually uh, increase the colour of the sky. So if I want a bit more orange, as you tend to get in a... In a, in a town where the, there's lots of street lights. So I can make that a bit more orange. And you can also use the lightness slider to darken it down. Uh, and that, that works quite well uh, as well. So in this case, I'm not going to use the lightness. So I'm just going to select the, just going to put that back to zero. So you can always double click on the word if you want to set things back to zero. I'm going to leave the saturation it is. I'm going to say OK. And I'm just going to go back into the adjustments layer, go back into brightness and contrast. Add a little bit more contrast to this shot, about 20 there, and just bring that brightness down just so it uh, it sort of works a little bit more with the sky that we've got there. So I'm actually going to go minus 100 on the brightness there. So it's quite, quite a big drop, but that, that sort of brings it to a similar level. So so when you're not able to use the, uh, the, the, the sky replacement module, uh, that's a way of manually putting the sky in in its place, particularly if you've got a big contrast difference between between the two. So we will actually do some more um, light changes when we go back into Lightroom, particularly with these these chimneys. Now they're quite bright. Uh, we need to darken those down a little bit and soften the edge just slightly. So we'll do that back in Lightroom. So for now, I'm just going to bring all of these layers and layer masks together. And I do that just by right clicking on any layer and merging visible. Now, some people say you should leave all the layers in there because it's non-destructive and you can always go back and change things. And that, that's very true. You can do that. But what it does do is it makes the file size larger. Um, and when I've got to a, a, a level within the image that I'm happy with, I don't really want to come back here and have to make any changes. I'm comfortable with what I've done. and I can always come and do it again if I really feel that I need to change something. So I tend to bring it all down to a single layer make the image as small as possible because it's going to come back as a TIFF into Lightroom. And of course, TIFFs can be quite large. You can be talking two or 300 megabytes for an image. So if you bring it all down into a single layer, that keeps everything as small as possible, gives your computer a chance uh, to keep up when you, you start doing a lot of work on the image. So I'm happy with where we are. We're going to send it back into Lightroom. So we're going to go to File and we're going to go to Close. And uh, we click Close first because I don't want it in, in Photoshop for the same reasons. I don't want this image in Photoshop taking up lots of memory in the computer. So I click save. So it will take that image out, send it back into Lightroom. But of course, the sky that we imported here is still here. So we can get rid of that by just Xing out of that as well. So it just drops um, Photoshop back to just the entry screen. So it's not using very much memory at all. And I can go back into Lightroom and find the image that we processed.
So what we're going to do is we're just going to finish off this this uh, this image with some additional masks. Just sort the sky out so we're happy with it and finish it off. A little bit of day tonight. If I had more time, because video is running on a little bit, I would light all the festoons here. Um, and I would probably light these other extra light lanterns on the wall up here. But I'm definitely going to do the main lantern here. And there's a little lantern outside this door here. So I'm going to do that one as well. And then we're just going to relight the scene, make sure we're happy with it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I want to um, darken down the top of the sky here. So I'm going to go into masks, I'm going to take a linear gradient and I'm going to take a linear gradient from the top there like so. And I'm just going to bring the exposure down a little bit more for up there, just a little bit. And uh, I'm just going to back the contrast off a little bit as well. And uh, I'm going to bring the highlights up for the sky just a little bit, just so the stars twinkle just slightly. But a way to make things twinkle is clarity. So add a little bit of clarity in that just gives you a little bit of twinkle. And interestingly, dehaze is quite a good slider to use when you're dealing with skies, particularly night skies, because if you go to a positive, you can actually create a little bit of haze in the sky. Uh, and the real world is that's generally generally what you see. So I'm just going to add a little bit in there, probably about a plus 15 in there. That that works very, very well. So I'm just going to make that a little bit darker, the gradient itself. There we go. And then I'm going to right click on this gradient and I'm going to duplicate the mask and I'm going to take a second one and move it up a little bit further up into the corner. So you've got a darker area in that very top corner there and just darken that down just a little bit more. And you can see it just sort of almost blends out in that top corner there. So the details really coming in around about here. So happy with that. Um, I want to darken down these chimneys, as I said earlier. So what we're going to do with that is create uh, another another mask here now and I'm going to select brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the auto mask on so it picks up the lighter areas versus the darker areas I can make sure we've got a good feather high feather I'm going to have quite a high flow about 60% I'm going to put a minus exposure in there and with this larger brush I'm just going to fill along the top of these just clicking making sure I'm on the area that I want to be on so it doesn't darken the sky too much because that's what the uh, auto mask will help us will help us do we can bring down these area brightness areas in here and I'm just gonna go in here as well bring this one down and I'm just gonna take the edges out there just just so it's not quite so bright just gonna take away that there we go so just just darkening down that that transfer between the the two areas as you can see and that just, just helps a little bit. I'm going to turn off the auto mask now, make my brush a little bit smaller, and I'm just going to come in on the really bright parts of the chimneys here and the roofs and just bring that down just a little bit more, especially here, look, on this, this sort of top area here. So I'm just painting that brush in into those areas. They're just going to get up there and just darken them down so they don't stand out too much against that night sky. We don't want them too bright. There's got to be a good transfer of contrast between the sky and that area there. And that, that's looking pretty good, actually. I'm quite happy with that now. Right, next thing to do is to light one of these lanterns. So I'm going to create a mask. I'm going to create a radial gradient. And I'm going to put a little radial gradient over this light fitting down here. We're going to zoom in, really zoom in on this, because it's a tiny little lantern. I'm going to back a little bit. That was a bit, bit big of a zoom. And then we're just going to go down there. We're going to zoom in on this lantern. There we go. So it's all it's just pixels, as you can see. There's there's not a lot lot of pixels for this lantern, but I'm just going to take a little light there. And I'm going to put the center where the light bulb is. You can see the light bulb there. I'm just going to bring that in there like so. Not too big. We're going to bring up the brightness. So I'm going to bring it up quite bright. There we go. And then I'm going to subtract a brush. OK, and that brush is going to have zero feather and maximum flow because we want to remove the, um, the the gradient. Now, we are dealing with very small details here, so it's we're literally down to the pixel level. So you don't have to be too accurate with what you're going to do. But we we just want to make sure using our standard technique of click, shift, click to get the straight lines. And we bring them in there so you can see we've we've gone around that lantern. We can make the brush bigger so we can paint the next the next part of the um, the radial gradient away so you can see shift click and just a bit bigger to so get rid of the rest of it 
we're just going to go around there. And if you do make a mistake and accidentally go over it like that, you can always Command or Control Z to undo it and then have another go to make sure that you've got it just right. So there we go. There is a little bit of a line there. I want to just take a very small line just across there. So I'm just going to draw a line from there to there with the shift. And that just breaks that up. So that's now illuminated. OK, we're going to click on that and right click again. And we're going to duplicate that mask. Right. And this time we're going to put, just make it the size of the light bulb. That's all we're going to do. So you can see the light bulb is nice and bright in there. So you've got the two up. So if we zoom back on that and uh, if we if we come out of the mask, you can see uh, just come out of the mask there. You can see that the lantern is on. But of course, it's going to light up the wall and it's going to light up the ground a little bit around it. So let's grab another mask and let's grab another radial gradient. And then we're just going to put that in there, just twist it slightly to the angle and put that dot behind where the light would light up on the wall and then just bring the exposure up a little bit so you can see you're getting a little blend of light there so I'm just going to light that area up just bring that down there we go now what it does do is it does make your lantern very very bright so I'm just going to go back to the um the mask number three which was the lantern itself I'm just going to zoom in so you can see it's too bright now the whole thing's too bright so go back to mask three and just bring that down until you can see the light bulb again. You can see there that the light bulb, the light bulb's in there. There we go. That looks quite realistic. I'm just going to come out the mask so you can see. There's the light bulb, the lantern, and some light on the wall. Yep, that works well. So just going to zoom back. We get a little bit of light on the floor as well, so we can always just go back into there. We can select and right click that that mask that we used on the wall. We can pop that on the ground here. Just turn it to it's at the right angle make it a bit longer, a little bit thinner. And you can see that's the light that's being cast on the ground by, by the lantern itself. So that works quite well. Now, what I'm also going to do is we're going to do this, this lantern up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take another mask, grab another radial, same, same as we just did. You're going to make it just slightly larger than the lantern itself. Just turn it so it's at the same angle as that. Um, increase the exposure to maximum so we can see that there. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more and then we're going to do the same thing on this mask. We're going to subtract a brush. The brush is still at zero feather, 100% flow. Make it a little bit bigger and we're going to click and then shift click to work our way around this, this light fitting. There we go. Just click, shift click and uh, we can light the lantern up so what the lantern will do is it does light out the bottom there so i'm just gonna leave the bottom open so the same as we did before bigger brush now just to go around and wash wash around there i can do the shift click there we go we've just cleared away and if you want to be sure that you've got everything just hover over the mask square and you can see what's still masked so i'm just going to take a small brush just to paint this line down the center here there we go. And just to make sure we get the um, the whole frame in, I'm just going to do that. So the lantern is now illuminated, but as before, click, right click, duplicate the mask. Okay, make this one smaller to represent the lamp that's inside the fitting. Okay, so there we go. Nice and bright. So I'm just going to come out now. So you can see there, you've got the lamp, the lamp in there. It might need to go slightly over. So I'm just going to go back onto it and uh, and just move it over slightly. Maybe even make it just slightly bigger. There we go. Right. So if we zoom back, you can see the lantern is now illuminated. All right. It does need to perhaps be a little bit brighter. And I'll show you how we can do that. We can go back into the mask, which represents the overall lantern. There we go, mask five. And we're at 100% on the exposure. So you could add another, uh, just add another one, or you could um, just increase the highlights and increase the whites. That will also help you boost the brightness of it as well. What I tend to do is if I need even more, then whilst I'm on mask five there, I can, uh, I can right click on it. And I can um, duplicate the mask, right? And we can make that bigger again. 
And as you can see, we can now alter the brightness of that third mask over the top so we can make it brighter or darker. So we get it where we want it to be, which is probably about there. Now there would be some light on the roof here coming from this, this light fitting. So I'm gonna create another radial gradient here. We're just gonna pull that out, pop it on the roof over here. Now it's important to understand where the light would hit this roof, okay? You might think it's down here, right? The light's coming down here. But if you look at the base of the, the, the uh, street light here, if you cross over to the building and then go up the front of the building to the roof line and then follow the roof line, the actual light center will be over here. So you'll actually be placing the light around about here. So we can just make that a little bit bigger. And what we're gonna do is just increase the exposure slightly to brighten the roof up. But what we do need to do, because it's very blue there, is add in some temp just to break that color up. And I'm gonna add in some contrast just just so it's not too it's not too bright that's probably just a little bit too bright so just back that brightness off a little bit so we've got a bit of light coming over there that's working quite well and uh, there's plenty of light on the ground i don't think we need to put anything down here so we're almost done i think we just need to finish off the the overall area and what i want to do for that is just dim the overall um lighting here so i'm just going to drop that the whole thing back slightly just a little bit there we go Okay, that, that looks quite nice. But then we're going to relight these areas um, just to make them work well. So back into mask and select radial gradient. I'm going to take quite a large radial gradient over this window here. Just turn it so it sits in the right place. There we go. We're going to add back that little bit of exposure that we lost. I'm going to bring the highlights down just slightly. There we go. I'm going to reduce the saturation just a little bit on that, that window there because it's quite orange. And the really important thing now is just to open up the shadows just a little bit more so the inside of the shop is much brighter. You can see that's really brightened it up. And just to give it the pop we need, we're gonna just add some clarity to that. There we go. That works very well. I'm gonna right click on here, duplicate this mask again, move it down onto the next window. And I'm just gonna make that one smaller. Now this one's a little bit further away. So the brightness needs to be ever so slightly less. So we'll bring that back just a little bit so that that looks looks natural. We're going to do the same again, duplicate the mask. We're going to take that mask up onto this window and we're just going to pop, pop that in there. I'm just going to turn that round slightly so it's sat in the right direction. I'm going to move that light up into that top area and th that works quite well. We could even probably boost the shadows a little bit more on that one. And a little bit more contrast. There we go. It might even brighten that one just a little bit more. But I don't want the area below too bright. So I'm just going to subtract from that mask a brush. And I'm going to take a brush here with a hard edge and just click one there and shift click there. And it will just take away from that lower area. Just got this last window over here to do. So we're going to take another, du duplicate this mask again. We're going to move that over onto this window. And we're just going to make this much smaller, just where that light is, as you can see, just makes it stand out just a little bit more. And uh, I don't think we need to do any more with that. We've, we've got what we wanted. OK, now the sign here, I want to just make that stand out a little bit. So I'm just going to create another mask with a brush. This brush, I'm going to have a big feather, 100 percent feather, half the flow, not too much flow. I add a little bit of contrast and I'll open up the shadows just a little bit. But the important thing I want to do here is add clarity. So I'm just gonna add 20 on the clarity and I'm just gonna take a smallish brush and I'm just gonna wash over there, over the sign. There we go. It just makes it stand out. Same with the sign above the window here and the same with the built-in 1490 above the window there. That works quite well. OK, that just leaves us this sort of center of the frame, which is quite dark at the moment. So we're going to create one more radial gradient. We're going to take quite a big radial gradient here. We're going to pop it slightly lower just to light along this, this edge here. Sh go to the same angle that you can see there. And then what I'm going to do is going to open up that exposures. Just make that a little bit brighter, not too much. Just going to bring the highlights down just slightly because we've got that lamp in there that we had and uh, open up the shadows just a little bit. But again, because it's all artificial light, it's important to add that clarity just to make it pop. That works quite well. Um, I don't want the end here lighting up this window too much, so I'm gonna subtract a brush. I'm gonna leave this brush with, um, 
with 100% feather and half flow. And I'm just going to just take that out from over here, just brush that away from the end there. So when you hover over that mask, you can see that the mask only goes as far as here. So that's looking good. I think the, the union flag needs just a little bit more to make it pop. So we'll take a little radial gradient to go up on that upper area, center it towards the flag and this sign here. And then we're just gonna brighten that up. There we go, bring the brightness up on that. A little bit of shadow added. And again, just a little bit of clarity that really makes the flag pop pop really well. Very nice. So um, just, just to let you guys know, everybody calls that a Union Jack. It's not a Union Jack. It's a Union flag. The Union Jack is the same flag that's flown at sea. So if you see that on a ship, then it's a Union Jack. If it's flown on shore, it's a Union flag. Uh, so that's, uh, that's our flag since... Around the late 1300s into the 1400s, it was originally started and then it's developed over time, but uh, the Union flag. So the last thing to do is to just light up the town hall over here. I could probably reuse this one here as well. So duplicate that, grab that and move it across. And the duplicating process, as you'll notice, really speeds up the use of uh, of these radials, makes them makes them easier and quicker because you've already got all the settings that you've just made are all in there. So yeah, I'm I'm happy with that that coming through there. I think we just need to come out of the the masks now. We just need to do a final trim of the colors and the brightness here. So I'm just going to brighten the whole scene up just a little bit. Going to bring the highlights down just a little bit. Open up the shadows just a little bit more. Makes it work there quite well. Yep, I'm going to check my blacks and whites. So I'm going to hold down the optional alt key and move the slider. Well, you can see we've got white showing there. So I'm just going to back that off. I'm not going to get away from having the lamp fully bright. So I think I'm going to come in there around about, yeah, just going to find my space. That's a bit much. So about there, about minus 25. Going to do the same with the blacks. So bring the blacks down until some black starts to appear. There we go. And I'll have that little bit of black in there. So we've got the right level of contrast. I think I'm just going to open up the shadows just a little bit more. Brighten the scene just a little bit more. There we go. And I think just the final thing to do here is a post crop vignette. Go down to effects. We can bring in quite a big post crop vignette, about minus 25. And whenever you do use this function and you do apply a post crop vignette there, darkening the edges, always go down to the feather slider just below and just push that up to 100%. And it just pushes it out, lifts it out a little bit more. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I I just looking that image now, I think we need just a little bit more in the center there. So one last radial gradient, nice big one in the center here, something like that. And I'm just going to give that a boost, just the center with a little bit, a little bit of contrast. So there you go. I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, how to do an HDR, you know, is HDR relevant in 2024? Well, it still is very much so. And uh, even with these super powerful cameras we now have these days, having the ability to extend your dynamic range by at least six, seven or eight, nine stops um, by using the HDR function really gives you the opportunity to shoot high contrast um, uh, locations like this, where you've got street lighting and, and starlight in the scene. This also uh, was a good, good little tutorial for showing you how you can do your own masking when the... Um, when the sky replacement module can't cope with a, a very abrupt edge. So you can bring your own sky replacement in as well. So I, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a like. Uh, it really helps the uh, YouTube algorithm. And uh, I really do love your comments and questions and tips that you give me. I always read them and uh, do my best to answer all of them. So uh, I appreciate that. And, and if you haven't already subscribed, um, please join me on this adventure in YouTube. I'm still having a great time. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. So bye bye for now.